Counters are sequential circuits which count through a specific state sequence. They can count up, counting like from starting from 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on and so forth. They can count down, let's say from 7, 6, 5, 4, and so on and so forth, down to 0 and then back to 7 again. Or they can count through other fixed sequences. For example, we can have 5, 3, 1, 5, 3, 1, 5, 3, 1, and so on and so forth. This could be also done using counters. So basically, they go through a given fixed sequence of numbers and count them. There are two commonly used uh, counters. One family of them is called the ripple counters and the other one is the synchronous counters. We will see what the ripple counters are and how they are constructed and what are their limitations and advantages over the synchronous counters and then later we will see what the synchronous counters are and how they are indeed constructed. Regarding the ripple counters, for them the clock, the clock was CP, is connected to the Philip Philop clock input on the LSB bit of the counter. You can think of the counter in the form of a register. So there are multiple cells. The clock will be connected, the main clock of the system will be connected to the clock of the least significant bit of the register or of the counter. For other bits, the Philip Philop output from the previous bit position will be connected to the clock input of that position. I will show you now how this is done. Uh, however, one issue here will be that there will be a delay between changing a value in one bit position and in the next bit positions, and this will be one of the drawbacks of such counters. However, since these counters are have very low power consumption and and they are also simple uh, to construct, they are becoming more popular. So for example, in, I can give you a counter with three Philip Philips, D-type Philip Philips. You can say that this is the least significant bit. I call it A, then B, and then C here. For the first one, the clock is provided directly from the clock pulse of the system. But for the next ones, here we have not A, not B, and not C. For the next ones, the clock comes not from the clock pulse of the system, but from the output of the previous Philip flop. So in this way, whenever there is a change in the value of the first Philip Philip, there will be a change in the value of the next one and then in the next levels as well. We will go through the details of such counters just now, just right now indeed. Regarding the synchronous counters, in the case of synchronous counters, the clock is directly connected to the clock input of all Philip Philips. And then there we need to have some part of combinational logic circuit in order to implement the whole counter system. So we will discuss about the synchronous counters later, but for now let's see more details regarding the ripple counters. Here you can see an example with two flip flops only, but obviously this could be extended to more. As you can see here, the clock is provided to the least significant of the counter, and then the first bit of the counter, the least significant bit, receives the negated output of the Philip Philip as its input. So what does this mean? Basically, this means that at each rising edge of the clock, the value of this bit will switch. If we assume that initially it was zero, so till this point, at this point it will become one, at the next rising edge it will become zero, then one, then zero, and so on and so forth. 
This is what we have for the least significant bit. Then for the next bit position for B D flip flop, you can see that the the clock input comes from the negated output of the first flip flop, and its input, the data input to that flip flop, comes from the negated output of the same flip flop. It means that whenever there is a rising edge at the negated output of the first flip flop, the content of the second flip flop will be negated. If we assume that this is what we have for A, then for not A, the signal will look like this. And now we can see where we have the rising edge of the clock. And if I assume that initially the value for B was zero, here I have the value for B. Over here it will not change, it will remain zero, but here it will become one. Then over here it will become zero and it will continue like this. In it you can see that diagram over here as well. So we have the clock pulse at each rising edge of the clock. Here, 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 here and here. You can see that the value of A changes of course with some delay. Over here it is also changing. It's changing here, here. Uh, here and, and there, yeah, at each rising edge of the clock. On the other hand, for the second beat, we have changes whenever there are falling edge of the clock for, for A, or rising edge of the clock for not A. So you can see that here the value changes from 0 to 1. Then here, when we have the falling edge of A, the value changes from 1 to 0 and it continues like this. If you assume that our number in the form of BA, it means that with each rising edge of the clock, initially we start with 0, 0, then 0, 1, then 1, 0, 1, 1, and then we will go back to 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, and this will continue over and over. So we have a counter which counts from 0 to 1, 2, 3, and then back to 0 again. So you can see that this counter could be implemented in a simple way. We can extend the number of the bits as well. We can have 4 bits, 8 bits, as you wish. We can have D, C, B, A, for example, with 4 bits, which can go from 0, 0, 0, 0, up to 1, 1, 1, 1, and then it could go back to 0, 0, 0, 0. So we can extend it. Again, as we see, the clock input for the, the clock input will be directly connected to the clock of the least significant bit. Then the negated output of that bit will be connected to the clock input of the next bit position. Uh, and it will continue like that over and over until we reach at the most significant bit. The main issue over here will be the timing problems because there is a delay from the time in which the rising edge of the clock is of the main clock is provided to the time in which there's a change in the value of the first bit. So you can see that here we have a small delay time here. Then when, when we have the falling edge of the clock falling edge of the uh, output of the first bit, let's say, least significant bit, after a given amount of delay, the change will happen in the next bit level. And now if we compare the amount of the delay that we have here, from the time in which we had the rising edge of the clock, till the time in which we have a change in the second bit, of the counter, we can see that the amount of the delay is increased as well. This will make problems when we have multiple number of the digits for our counter. So as the number of bits of the counter increases, the amount of the delay between the rising edge of the clock 
of the main clock and the time in which the 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 beat the most significant bit let's say of the counter changes its value will be will could become considerable and then this will make us some issues we may be limited in terms of the frequency of the operations yeah well these counters are called deeper ripple counters because as you can see how the the counter behaves in it initially it's sensitive to the rising edge of the clock to initiate the the counting sequence for one change in it and then the output of each uh, Philip flop is used as the clock pass for the next bit position and it continues like this so the changes ripple upward in the yeah, through the chain of Philip flops each transition occurs after a clock to output delay from the stage before and again this is where we are going to face some problems as we have the the change in this case we have the falling gauge of the clock which result in which results in a change in the value of a and then the falling edge of a results in a change in the value of b and similarly in the value of c and this will happen uh, when we go from 1 1 1 back to 0 0 0 you can see that here we have a considerable amount of delay and as the number of the bits for the counter increases this delay becomes bigger and bigger and as a result we will be limited in terms of the frequency that we could have for the counting for this reason we have the synchronous counters which don't have this issue with the delay but their design is completely different